Are you afraid of the dark? Well, when the dark can literally hurt you, you should be. I'm Adam Scott, and this is Alan Wake Remastered. It's coming for me. Whatever you do, don't go out in the dark. Stay in the light. The dear Alan Wake was developed by Remedy Entertainment and originally published by Microsoft exclusively for the Xbox 360 back in 2010. The remastered version released in 2021 for current and last-gen PlayStation and Xbox consoles, PC, and the Switch. For this review, I played the PlayStation 5 version, and I have to say, it was strange playing this game on anything other than Xbox, considering the original exclusivity. The legendary developer Remedy has a library of unique titles that aren't easily grouped into generic categories. Most known for Max Payne, a gritty crime noir, and one of the first games to pioneer bullet time. Remedy described Alan Wake as the mind of a psychological thriller and the body of a cinematic action game, combining liberal inspiration from the likes of Stephen King and Twin Peaks with a gameplay hook centered around darkness. They've stated that the game doesn't belong squarely in the survival horror genre, which may come as a surprise to some. While there are some horror elements, it's far more thrilling, intense, than scary. Taking over five years to create, Alan Wake was originally conceived as an open-world survival game, designed specifically to be the opposite of Max Payne's linear structure. But the team struggled marrying the gameplay with the story they wanted to tell, and eventually scrapped it for a strictly linear episodic game to support the narrative structure. The game itself consists of six episodes, and the storyline is continued by two special DLC episodes, The Signal and The Writer, that come with the remastered version. Additionally, a six-episode live-action web series called Bright Falls acts as a prequel to the game, and a number of related books also expand on the Alan Wake story. The overall structure and pacing is similar to a thriller TV series, with episodes that contain plot twists and cliffhangers. There are even story recaps throughout, just like in a TV series. The game follows famous thriller writer Alan Wake, voiced by Matthew Peretta, on a trip to Bright Falls with his wife Alice. When he arrives in the town, a mysterious old woman gives him the keys to a rickety old cabin on the island in the middle of a lake. It's here Alice reveals the trip is meant to help Alan get over his years-long writer's block and begin work on his next novel. Alan is furious, feeling tricked, and storms out of the cabin. Just then, Alice cries out in a panic as she's dragged into the lake beneath the surface. Alan dives in to save her, but he's too late, slowly succumbing to the watery blackness. When he comes to, he's in a dark forest, surrounded by shadowy figures, and the pages of a mysterious manuscript he doesn't remember writing. What the hell's going on? Well, if you don't know, hell if I know. Here he's confronted by the Taken, enemies given strength by the darkness, and must survive the haunted woods. He's later told the island cabin sunk into the lake years ago, and he can't possibly have stayed there in the first place. Throughout the game, Alan discovers the lake is home to an entity known as the Dark Presence. The Presence has infected the lake and uses Alan's writings to alter the nature of reality. The living darkness soon infects the entire town of Bright Falls, and it's up to Alan and his trusty flashlight to dispel the shadowy creatures, save his wife, and drive the darkness from the town. The world of Alan Wake is one of fear and tension, a place where you need to be afraid of the dark, because if you're not, you'll be enveloped by the evil forces that dwell just out of sight. The foreboding atmosphere that permeates every inch of this wilderness never lets you forget the dangers that await. Alan Wake doesn't offer enough surprises to keep you unhinged, but the storytelling is so enthralling and the combat is so frantic that you'll be sucked in until the very end. Alan Wake's sense of place, its themes, the mood it creates makes it a classic and nothing, not even time, can overshadow that. It's not so scary that it falls into horror, but with enough scares that it doesn't fit nicely into action. Alan Wake is absolutely in a league all its own. Its influences are proudly flaunted, from the warped town of Bright Falls seemingly ripped straight out of David Lynch's Twin Peaks, and the numerous references to Stephen King, like when a Taken cleaves a hole in the door and Alan makes a direct comparison to The Shining or the in-world TV show Night Springs, which is Remedy's amazing reimagining of The Twilight Zone. While the influences are everywhere, they don't feel cheap, just some spark of nostalgia to trick your brain into feeling something. These are so well integrated into the consistently great writing that they create a richness to the world. Alan's often hokey, over-the-top narration feels intentional, 
like he's reading a manuscript of his best-selling novel, which he is. No one is safe in a good horror story, certainly not the protagonist. That's what makes them fun. This was anything but. He's filled with as many questions as you are, with no explanation for the strange events occurring all around him. A cast of fantastically written and well-rounded characters populates the town, without a single stock standard or boring one. Like Emil Hartman, the therapist who tries to make Alan question whether everything is all in his mind. Or Robert Nightingale, the FBI agent who relentlessly hunts Alan, convinced he killed his wife, and is using the delusions as a cover. And then you have Sarah Breaker, the small town sheriff who's one of the few people to actually believe Alan and helps to fight by his side. But my favorite has to be Barry Wheeler. In fact, it's the absolute opposite of good. Alan's high-strung agent and best friend, who's a fish out of water in this small town, with that Joe Pesci and My Cousin Vinny vibe. So, it's either wear the leather jacket, which I know you hate, or this. So I wore this ridiculous thing. This group of characters work so well at bringing life to the story, and the voice actors do an incredible job of selling their characters. And if I don't get my way, I'll sulk all day long. Each episode progresses the story forward, has a number of combat sequences, some light puzzle solving, and plenty of exploration. Alan's controls are stiff, even in the remastered version, with awkward animations at times, particularly when you're in a panic. It's never stated, but I assume Alan has some sort of heart condition based on how quickly he gets winded when running. You lift, bro? You'll rarely have a moment's rest in Alan Wake, often confronted by a handful of Taken at a time. They'll spawn all around you without any indication, so you'll need to keep your head on a swivel. With excellent combat that builds on the fantastic storytelling ensuring there's never a dull moment, the darkness shrouding the Taken acts as a shield, initially rendering them impervious to attacks. So you'll have to use a light source to whittle down and eventually remove the darkness, and then fill them with lead until they're dead, usually sending them hurtling away like a bottle rocket with a satisfying pop that gives you that Pavlovian satisfaction. This mechanic is not only original, but it also leads to thrilling situations. When you're surrounded by a gang of growling beasts, you have to choose one individual at a time to hit with light, and balancing your aim to keep all attackers at bay is exciting. If baddies get too close to you, you can duck out of the way at the last second, triggering a slow motion dodge that lets you quickly retaliate before they have a chance to attack again. The Taken come in all different shapes and sizes, from standard guys that can be put down with a few well-placed shots, to big brutes that take three or four shotgun blasts to the face. They wield all manner of blunt and bladed instruments, from mallets and knives to shovels and chainsaws. Besides the Taken, you'll have to fight off flocks of possessed ravens and objects like bulldozers animated by the evil surrounding them. At times, you'll even be running for your life from the swirling darkness itself. Your flashlight is your first line of defense for destroying the darkness. You can boost the strength of the beam to destroy the darkness faster, draining the battery in the process. When the battery is drained, it no longer affects the darkness, so you'll either need to insert fresh batteries into the flashlight or wait for it to recharge slowly. You'll find more powerful flashlights as you explore and can take advantage of environmental light sources, like starting up a generator to light up a lamp. But these require a few precise button taps, which can be stress-inducing when an axe-wielding demon is breathing down your neck. You'll also have other light-based weapons, like flares that will give you breathing room when surrounded, flashbangs that act as grenades, and flare guns, which are like rocket launchers often turning a dozen taken into flaming husks. You got a wife? A uh, family? Streetlights and other light sources provide a safe haven, which the Taken can't enter, and will regenerate your health faster. Otherwise, health regenerates slowly with time. You can even travel the vast distances by car, using the headlights to blast the darkness and ram any Taken in your way. That's a good plan! Once the darkness is gone, you'll use more traditional weapons. Aside from your standard pistol, you can nab a hunting rifle and a shotgun to make short work of the enemies. Rapidly tapping X reloads your ammunition more quickly, and your frantic button taps mirror Alan Wake's movements as you both try desperately to stay alive. There's a risk and reward to every moment, and all of the mechanics are perfectly balanced to make these sections anxiety-riddled and thrilling. However, by the halfway point, you've seen everything combat has to offer. It never evolves or gets any deeper. With most of the encounters playing out the same way after a while, the combat will start to feel stale by the last episode. Exploration is as important as combat when trying to make your way through these haunted woods. While the overall levels are linear, 
They feel large, with a lot of nooks and crannies. Going off the beaten path is the only way you can find the hundreds of optional collectibles, which is one of the most interesting aspects of the storytelling as you wind your way through the dimly lit forests. Pages from your unpublished manuscript are strewn about everywhere, and you'll want to grab these even though you have to venture deep into the deadly forest to do so. These passages frequently foreshadow events, giving you a snippet of something terrifying waiting for you just around the bend. At other times, they'll give you a peek at what other people in the town are up to. These pages flesh out the story in fascinating ways, but there are even more elements tucked away if your eyes are sharp. Abandoned TVs and radios can be switched on for a brief exposition that gives you another look at what's going on just beneath the surface. The TV show is particularly intriguing. Modeled after The Twilight Zone, these creepy scenes contain all the twists and moral lessons the classic series is known for. Several of Remedy's games have these in-world TV shows with real actors, which are all fantastic and just a joy to experience. After all this time, Alan Wake still holds up. The things that made it good in 2010 are still good now. So Alan Wake Remastered brings a nice new coat of paint to a house with a good foundation. Now it might be a haunted house, but it's still a good house. Other than the visuals, most of the game remains unchanged, aside from some minor tweaks. There's a new commentary track by creative director Sam Lake, which doesn't give any new profound revelations, but mostly gives insights into the process of writing the game. I found the bits where he explained how Alan Wake and Remedy's control were connected to be particularly interesting. Just don't expect anything earth-shattering. Okay, so it's a graphical facelift, but it's largely an impressive one. Alan Wake's environments always looked good, but now the forests and surrounding backgrounds are freaking stunning at times. Lighting has been given a major overhaul, leveraging newer technology and elements like volumetric fog, making the dark woods of the Pacific Northwest that much creepier. The cinematics in particular look great in the remastered version. Character models have been reworked and look less like puppets and a little more like actual people. Now I said more like actual people, they still kind of look like puppets though. And I really don't like the new look of Alan himself. He doesn't have that same grizzled look from the original. But that is a totally personal gripe. Animations feel a bit less stilted, and coupled with a lot of the great character dialogue, they make the game's narrative a joy to revisit, even if you're a longtime fan. The biggest upshot is the 60 FPS presentation in 4K on current gen, making the combat and particularly those death-defying dodges all the more harrowing. For those completionists out there, doing everything and getting all the trophies or achievements isn't overly difficult but it'll require you to be observant and a bit of preparation. Most of the combat-related trophies should come naturally just by playing the game, like 100 kills with your shotgun. Other trophies reward your diligence in hunting for the collectibles. They're not overly hidden, but with so many of them and without the ability to backtrack, it's easy to miss something. There are also some things you need to make sure you do before you move forward, like listening to all of the doctor's voice recordings before leaving his office. Lastly, You'll have to play through at least a second time on Nightmare Difficulty to clean up the last few trophies you didn't get on the first round. Good news, the game wants you to succeed. The trophies on PS5 come with hints, and you can track your progress in the handy statistics menu. A single playthrough will take you anywhere from 8 to 10 hours, and expect 25 or more hours to do everything. When Alan Wake came out in 2010, it was praised by the critics and has since grown a cult following. The visuals, Sound and unique mechanics all received positive reviews, but the story, pacing, and atmosphere are what really stood out to me and most others who loved this game. All these years later, Alan Wake still feels like something in a class all its own. Like it could have popped up in any year, on any platform, and it would have been special. It's a testament to the risks Remedy Entertainment takes that the game still feels fresh. The way its narrative weaves together with its gameplay, the amount of care and effort placed on its character and dialogue, and its TV show-like presentation are all elements that set it apart from other games. Even now, Alan Wake still feels intriguing, fascinating, and weird. So if you've never played Alan Wake before, or you're itching to re-experience Alan's descent into darkness, this is absolutely the way to do it. All right, you've heard my take on Alan Wake Remastered, and I'd love to hear yours as well. Also, what's your favorite horror game? Let's talk about it in the comments down below. If you liked the video, hit like and subscribe. And if you want another game that you haven't played, check out my video right here. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.